Today I'm going to show you how to create a sprite that we can animate directly inside Unity. And this is going to be a sprite that we will be using in future episodes. So if you don't have a sprite yet, this is a good place to start and just sort of create a sprite with me step by step. So when we talk about animating a sprite for Unity, there is a couple of different ways to do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a couple of ways that I didn't know about. The two main ways is to either do frame by frame animation like the character I have in front of me here. As you can see, I do have this orange hair guy that has been animated and then I exported it as a PNG sequence so that each photo if played after each other really fast is actually him running. And this is one way to do it and you can do this using any sort of animation program like After Effects or Adobe Animate and you can even do it using Photoshop so you don't even need to have an animation tool because Photoshop does actually have animation capabilities although it being limited but you can use Photoshop in order to animate characters for your Unity video games. But now there is another way to animate a character for Unity. Instead of creating a complete animation using an animation tool, which I know some of you may not have, another way to do it would be to just simply create one player sprite. So just a single image and then take that image, import it into Unity. And then Unity does actually have a built in bone tool that we can use to stretch and make the legs run and do all sorts of things with this one player sprite. So we can animate it directly inside Unity and we don't have to use an external animation tool and do frame by frame animation like we have here. It does also tend to make for a much smoother animation I think to animate directly inside Unity so that is the way that I like to do it and again it does also depend on what kind of style you want for your video game so if you do want frame by frame animation because it's part of the style then of course you shouldn't do direct animation inside Unity and you could do frame by frame like I've done here with this guy but it's just to say that there is a couple of different ways to do it and just for the beginning here for this course I think it's a good idea just to create one sprite that we can then pull into Unity and animate together. Now I'm going to be using Photoshop for this but you don't have to use Photoshop you can use any kind of drawing tool that you can find out there there's a lot of free options online you just need a simple drawing software where you can create a very basic PNG image the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new character or a, a new project so I'll go in here and I'll say 500 times 500 is somewhat decent I'll put my resolution to 72 and with the project open I'm going to create a background color just so we have something we can see you know when we start drawing the character on top of it so I'll just go ahead and pick some kind of color just something dark there we go it's just a simple background layer so we can actually see what's going on in here once we start drawing something I'll go ahead and pick my uh, ellipse tool which is over here in the side and I'll just create a very basic circle and I'll make it something like this make sure it's centered the background color for now is just going to be some kind of white color and I'll go ahead and select my square tool or my rectangle tool is called and I'll just create a very basic rectangle that goes down something along the lines of this and I'll just go ahead and pick the anchor point at the bottom left corner and move it in slightly so I'll just move it in I'll say yes here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's do 26 something along these lines so I'll do the other side as well and I think this is fine for now so what I'll do is I'll pick the square tool again or the rectangle tool and I'll just go ahead and create a couple of squares that goes out like this I think this is fine I do want to make sure the corners are curved and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'll just move it down below. I'm also going to resize it just slightly matches. So it, it like curves inwards, just like with the, the square that we have behind it. Then I want to duplicate it again. So we have a third one and I just want to drag it down. So we have it just hitting the bottom of the background square. You know, the one that we have here. I also want to make sure there's the bottom layer of these three different ones. So I'm going to drag it just down below the other two. I'm going to change the color of it so we can actually see what is going on. So I'm just going to make it red. Right now, we're just sort of trying to create a cylinder. We're not really going to be painting in the player just quite yet. For now, it's just a silhouette. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and resize the bottom one. I'll drag it up to the center of the cylinder that we have at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and resize it in slightly just so it goes right outside and covers the background of this box here. I'm going to take my two cylinders and I'll move them down slightly so it goes around here. And I think this is a good point to start painting it in so you can actually see what we're creating here because the character that I have in mind is something that will make sense in future episodes. So now comes the fun part. We're going to paint everything in. So I'll go ahead and take the top cylinder. I'll double click it and I'll just go ahead and say that we want to have a color overlay. I'll make this one into a 
sort of darkest gray. Something along the lines of 454545. You can kind of see what's on the screen here. So you can just copy the color codes down. Um, so I don't have to repeat everything in here. The inner glow, I'm also going to go ahead and set to something along these lines here. This is actually kind of perfect. Maybe a little bit more. So let's uh, let's create a small choke at around 20% and a size of 10 pixels. Then with this, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to double click the other rectangle. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'll just take this one off, just like the previous one. And then I'm going to go to the bottom red one that we created. So I'll go in, double click my layer, open up the layer styling again, and I'll do another color overlay. But this time I'm going to make it slightly brighter. So it's going to be something along the lines of this. C1, 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 I think is good. Inner glow as well, just so we have a little bit of gradient going on, some depth to this character. And I think what I have here is actually kind of good. So I'll just go ahead and accept this. And now what I want is I want to combine the top circle with the background that we have down here. So I'm going to make sure I have both of them selected. I'll right click them inside my layer, rasterize them. Then I'll merge them together. I'll double click it and start adding some styling to this one as well. I'm not gonna do a color overlay, but instead I'll do a gradient overlay. So what I'll do is I'll take this one off. Now, right now it does have a default gradient selected. So if I were to click the gradient here, you can see that we have a bunch of presets in here. And I just went down to the oranges and I don't know if you can tell yet, but we're actually trying to create a light bulb character that is going to be running around. And then in future episode, it's gonna light up the scenes around it. I think for a light bulb, Something like this might be good. You know what, I'll, I'll pick this one. I'll pick the sixth one in the row. And if you're using Photoshop, just kind of apply the same styling as I have here. Then I'll go to inner glow. I want to make sure we have some kind of, you know, dark glow going around the border. You could argue that maybe we wanted to have a light glow because this is a light bulb. But I think for now, let's just go ahead and pick a dark one. I also want to make sure I have a inner shadow and this one is going to come from the left side over here. And it's going to be something around these lines. Luckily, everything has been set up before this episode. So I can just like tick them on and everything is like it's supposed to. So just kind of like copy the styling that I have here and get the same effect that I have. And with this, we actually now have somewhat of a character. I'm just going to go and deselect the background here so we can kind of see how this looks like. The artistic side of making video games is really my weakest point. So I think this is OK for making something that we can use in future episodes. <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of artists in the comment section tell me that it doesn't make sense. There's shadows on a light bulb, but that's what the character is going to have for now. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my pen tool and I'm just going to create a new layer that is going to be on the top for now. And I'll go ahead and create some legs for this character here. So I'll just go ahead and draw them like free draw them. I'll just go ahead and click and I'll click somewhere around down here. I'll just make a leg that looks something like this. Now, before we fill in the path, what I'll do is I'll just click my brush tool and make sure that it does look like I want it to. Like right now it is set up like I want it to. Cause like, like I said, I set everything up before I start recording. Um, but you want to make sure that the brush stroke is what the leg should look like. So right now this is what I want it to be. So I'll go back to my pen tool and I'll just go ahead and right click stroke path, set it to brush. And then I'll just say, OK, then I'm going to create a new layer after clicking delete twice because I want to delete the pen path, create a new layer. And then I'm just going to draw the other leg as well. And there we have a couple of legs. Now, I do want to make sure the layers are moved behind so they don't go in front. So I'll just take them, drag them down. But now when it comes to creating a light bulb, sometimes there is like a little swirly thing in the middle. I don't know if you've seen a light bulb before. There's like this little thing in there in the center that actually creates the light. So what I'll do is I'll take the pen tool. I'll select the white color, create a new layer, and I'll just try and somehow mimic the swirly thing that you see inside. So it goes up and it swirls a couple of times and then it goes down something like that. And again, if you don't get it right the first time, just try a couple of times. I'm sitting here with a mouse. I do have a tablet I could be using for this, but I'm stubborn, so I'll try and do this with my mouse. Once you have a swirly thing, just go ahead and move it down a couple of layers. So we have it below here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some eyes and some eyebrows. I'll create a small circle, something along the lines of this. Want to make sure it is filled in as a dark grayish color. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this ellipse. I'll duplicate it. I'll move it over to the other side and then I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'll just draw something that looks somewhat like an eyebrow. 
I'll zoom in so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I also want to make sure that it is curved. There we go. I can actually see them. Curve them out and pull them in slightly so it fits with the eye. And then I just want to make him a little bit sad because this guy here, he is a light bulb and he's very fragile. So he's constantly nervous about breaking. So it makes sense to make his eyes a little bit sad and not too angry. And then I just want to duplicate the eyebrow. Move them down slightly like this. And I think something like this is perfectly fine. Now, something you should know about Photoshop and Unity is that these two programs are actually pretty compatible with one another. So you could actually save this as a Photoshop file or as something called a PSB file, which is something that is a bit more compatible with Unity. And what it's going to do is once you import it into Unity, it will automatically take all the layers inside your artboard and arrange them as separate sprites or at least part of the sprite when you import them into Unity. But now I know not everyone has Photoshop and that's what I said at the beginning here. I will be focusing on this tutorial being very uh, friendly towards people who do not have Photoshop. So there is another way to do this that is perfectly fine as well, which is that we're going to take all the limbs and we'll just move them out from the character and just make sure they don't touch the main part of the body like so and like so. And what you can do here is you can then export as a PNG image. So you'll go down to export, export as, and make sure you have PNG selected. Then I'll go ahead and say export and just save it somewhere on my computer. So with this, we now have a character that we can actually import into Unity and animate directly inside Unity using the built-in bone tool and the animation tool. This is pretty much all you need to know when it comes to creating a sprite that you can animate using those tools. Again, if you wanna do frame by frame animation, that is very much a possibility as well. Uh, just know that that is not going to be the way we're going to do it in the next video. Like you don't have to have this sprite, but you just need to have a sprite for the next episode that has something that can move. So with this, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.